Okay, my name is Marcy Skaronsky. Holler House is like my life, it is. Yeah, we named it the Holler House. Well, the, it's been the Holler House for about 35 years now. Some man came in here and he says to me, would you like to get bombed with me? So my wife's in California. And I said, sure, why not? So the following week, he brings her in when she came back and she was a little German lady. When he brought her in here, it was a political convention going on. Oh, and everybody's arguing politics. The jukebox is going, somebody's playing that beat a piano. She didn't know where to look. So the following week, he said to her, where would you like to go for a couple of drinks? She said, take me to that holler house. Because it was so nice. And everybody started calling it a holler. And I said to my husband, why don't we just name it the holler house? We have leagues on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And Fridays, we usually leave that open for parties. And the party's good. They're a lot of fun. Well, it's pretty competitive here, or is it all just kind of for fun? Well, it's more fun, I think. Yeah. Like, uh, my grandson, or like, uh, who else wants to bowl a three? You know, they want to bowl the 300, you know. Now, Bo Burton, like I told you, he set up pins here. He set up for a whole game. He put two in each hand, and cradle one in each arm, you know. I never saw anybody set up pins like that. So I told him he gets kicked off a of TV, he can get a job down here, setting up pins. You know who Bo Burke? Bo oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a nice guy. See, now we used to have the, uh, the, the bowling association here. But then a man was from Texas and he moved it to Texas. And it should have been here, it should have stayed here. And then whenever they came in, I needed the bowlers, well then naturally they stopped in here. Much of a oh yeah, I used to bowl twice a week. Okay. And when I throw the ball, the pin boys would sit there and just wait for it to go <laughs> so slow. But I held a 145 average, I wait. But then I had a, a I had a problem with the sciatica, and then I stopped for a year, and then I stopped. Yeah. So I don't bowl anymore. And then I go to all the tournaments, I'll back the girls to the tournaments. Like we used to go national tournaments. That was a riot too. Take a plane to Reno, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, when you go out with these gals, they really turn loose, boy. <laughs> and now they're all settled. And then then when they settled, this is funny. Now they, they were a riot when they were younger, and boy, oh boy. So now they settled down and they were married and got kids. And now they talk about these other people. You know, and I says, who in the devil do you think you're talking to? Remember when your husband was here and I used to keep the shade at that mess so you couldn't come in with your boyfriend? <laughs> and now all of a sudden they're Mother Teresa. <laughs> and this is our second batch of bras. The first batch was, they were falling apart. Well, about 45 years ago, we were sitting here, the girls, and we all got bombed, and we decided to take our clothes off, start hanging up our bras. Oh, my husband almost killed me, you know, my husband was, my husband was something else, he just keep an eye on me. And, uh, yeah, then it just kept on. The first time you're in here, then you take your bra off, you know, and then sign it and hang it up. And now the guys, it all started with these Marquette kids. They did an article on me. So they says, can we hang up our underwear? I said, sure. So he went to John, he said, would you sign my butt? I said, I'd like to, Marcy. And uh, so now this has been a tradition, you know. I had three bankers in your St. Patrick's Day. And uh, they says, well, if I took my pants off, would you sign it? my butt? I said, sure. He said, how the hell am I going to explain this to my wife? I'm coming home without any underwear and Marcy on my butt. And I said, tell him an 86-year-old lady that he's, yeah, she's going to believe me. I haven't seen that guy since you probably killed him. <laughs> <laughs> now, everybody made booze during Prohibition. And then the feds would come in looking for the booze. They'd go all over looking for the booze. And where they hid the booze, my husband was a baby. They had an apartment back there. And they hid the booze underneath the crib. They had a setup. So the feds would come in, they'd see the baby, that, you know. They wouldn't touch the baby, but that's where the booze was. Oh, my father-in-law was something else. He used to drink, he used to drink a case of old fits a week, 100 proof bonded, 18 cigars a day. Yeah, that guy was a tough guy. 
Well, and you, and if you're the language that they're using now, one time he threw out a guy for saying shit, he threw him right to the screen there. But uh, it, 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 the neighbors, well, years ago, nobody had transportation like they do now. So everybody stuck around a, a neighborhood tavern. And this place is, by four o'clock, you couldn't even get in the place, it was three deep. Because all everybody came back from work, and that's when Milwaukee had your big industry, like Elmas Chalmers and that, and they worked in the factories. And of course, now that's all gone. My uh, in laws built this place. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I've been here 58 years. I got, we got five generations now. I've got a great grandson. And he's going to be 11 years old this weekend, and he just can't wait till he can set up pins, because this kid wants to make money. And he says, You're too little to. He says, My dad was. 10 years old, I said, your dad was about 13 when he started. <laughs> and he's so anxious because he wants to make the money. But my kids aren't taking over. <clears throat> See, I got two grandsons and then my son-in-law. And my son-in-law does a lot of stuff. And he takes care of the books and everything. And him and the two boys will probably take over, you know. And then, of course, like my daughter, she's a social butterfly, you know. And, uh, and then I got the one that just retired from the airline. I got a kid on Social Security, I can't believe that. Or when you're about 40, you think 60 years old. Now I'm 86 and I don't think I'm old. I don't feel old, really. I have fun with everybody. And I guess what they want to see this old lady, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like this one, <laughs> this funny, this guy, one guy come in here and he says to me, what's an old lady like you attending bar for? And I because I want to. And he says, you know, you should be living with your children. You could get shot. I said, I'd rather get shot. <laughs> Who now wants to live with the kids? <laughs> That's what I told him. Who in the world wants to live with their kids? Jesus. You know, and when I was in Arizona, when I was in Arizona, my husband, see, my husband passed away, and then I did some volunteer work. And I go into this hospital, and there's a real food. He said, what would you like to do? I said, I'd like to read porno to the blind. And this guy takes his wheelchair and starts running with it. I don't know if he thought I was going to seduce him or what the <laughs> devil I was going to do. And he's running with his wheelchair. And, I, and my, my friend says, I don't think they appreciate your sense of humor down here. <laughs> yeah, but we yeah, these people down here don't know how to have fun. Here they sit and play cards. And then I went to visit my friend in the, uh, the villages. And you know what? Those people, they have their little communities, you know? And then everybody's got their little bands, and they sit there, line dance and clap. And they says, aren't you having fun? I said, oh, yeah, sure. I said, boy, oh, boy, that is in my bag. Like that guy I went with wanted me to sit on a porch and watch these damn burls and squirrels. <laughs> yeah, he, honest to God, he had little squirrel benches, and they sat on this bench and chopped on a cob of corn. And all the birds flying around. Now, now did you ever have sex with him? Lots. Years ago, we used to have a, a, a neighborhood crowd. But see, they, they're older, the half of them died, and uh, then half of them moved out. And, and, but I see the kids, you know, and the grandchildren come in. And it's really nice, you know, the thing is, they all, they're all over the country, and every time they hit Milwaukee, they'll stop in here to see, you know, how the place is still going. A lot of people walk in here to see, you're still here? Where the hell would I be? What am I gonna do? This is like my playground. I mean, what else would I be doing? Yeah, these are when I'm gonna retire. So, like I said, retire to what? I moved upstairs even, so now, yeah. And if I'm not here, they ask for me, they just come up there and visit me, or also come down here and drink with the bunch. Like last night, I sat drinking with the gang. They were drinking these rum chadas with that dog on. Yeah, and they were t- topping him off with that tequila. Yeah, you should see how to create strings <laughs> off. Oh God, I, I, I remember when we used to get so bummed. We were talking about it Sunday. My son-in-law, on Sunday nights he'd say, let's close this place and go tavern hop. Okay. So we go and we end up at some Mexican place. And I was doing the Mexican hat dance with this guy. And I was drinking tequila and you name what I was drinking. And I ended up at a restaurant at 2 o'clock in the morning, 
And my son-in-law said I ate a burrito as big as a football. I don't remember that. And now, and now we walk in the house, and my husband's all dressed up. This is four o'clock in the morning, and he always sleeps. He never. You are a divorce. I start thinking of it. I'm so bummed. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. And then the door was open, and the John, I walked right into the John door, and I got a big bump on my head. And the next day, I had to get well to die. I was so sick. And he said, and I said, see, and you thought I was having so much fun in those sick. <laughs> Oh yeah, we used to have some weekends here when I was drinking. I don't drink as much as I used to. I can't handle it. <laughs> but I was at a ball game last year. I don't remember coming home. We were drinking vodka tonics, and they were serving them in those mugs. There was that much vodka, and I had four of those. I can't drink beer. I get goofy on beer. I get real silly on beer. When I drink them little shardies. I get enough, I start throwing bottles around, my son luck could kill me. <laughs> yeah, I can't drink beer. Like what that article in the, in the Sports Illustrated, you know, when Frank DeFore was here, and he's very impressive, he's a big guy. And he came here with a bunch of big shots from Miller High Life. Now, this was 1988. And usually when they interview you, out they go, and they stuck around for three and a half hours. And I thought, well, being Miller, hell yeah, I gotta drink beer, right? <laughs> so now, I was telling him all kinds of crazy stuff, right? So my husband, when he saw that article, my husband said, when the hell are you gonna sober up when you're being interviewed? I said, I was sober. He talked to me for about an hour. To, he put every foolish thing I said behind the bar. All the foolishness in that article. See, years ago, it was a guy's day would come in and drink. And then the, the wives would be on the phone. Tell that so-so to come home, I got supper on. But now the women work, and they want to come out now. It isn't just the guys anymore. In fact, the women drink more than the guys do now. Oh yeah, and it's uh, the thing is the way people drink, you know. Like years ago, we had that old ice box, and the old timers like beer out of that, you know. With, and we had uh, 200 pounds of the ice delivered every second day. And then when we had it refrigerated, I had to put the beer under warm water just to take the chill off for the way. See, they didn't like that icy beer. Of course, now the kids, you know, see, kids drink different, you know. I shouldn't say even kids, older people too are getting crazy. They didn't drink all that stuff. Well, the bowling alley, a lot of people come in here to look at the bowling alley. Well, they end up at the bar and have a ball with them, you know. Um, and it's a fun place. It really is. They get going and they get crazy. What's the best part of running this? The people. That's like my extended family. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. We've got some really nice people that come here. They would come here for, how long have you been coming here? Quite a while, Jimmy. Uh, about 1995. Yeah, see now, that, he's one of the newer ones. I got people coming in 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah, you know, you'll never be a millionaire in this kind of business, but it's it's uh, pays the bills and extra money. Oh yeah. If, if there are people from outside of the community, if you had to tell them one thing that you think would get them here, what would you say is the best thing to know about the Holler House? I'm a tramp. <laughs>